Photographic Composition, Lecture 3, Light, Part 3. William Klein is an American photographer uh, who began in the 1950s, um, had a very aggressive style, um, was particularly interested in motion and um, people connecting or coming towards each other, um, as you can see in this image. Um, the backlighting uh, underlines this, set, this feeling of, of kind of unease, that there's something going on that we don't have any control over. Um, uh, we can see the backlighting primarily because of the uh, shadows coming from the, the leg of the, the soldier and the, um, the body of the, the model. Um, and there's also activity in the background. His, his images tend to be very full of uh, action. Um, and speaking of action, uh, this is by Ernst Toss, who was um, a, an early serious colorist. Um, most of his images were, were color. Um, and he was very interested in um, uh, relatively long exposures, recording action, as we can see here. Um, it's very difficult to make out any details. We have a sense, though, that this is a rodeo. And um, the, the colors are absolutely extraordinary. Um, he was um, intent on only using Kodachrome, which, um, of course, doesn't exist anymore, um, but primarily because they were so rich. This is by George Tice, um, American photographer, um, who operated as a, a photojournalist um, largely, but also um, uh, had projects of his own. And in this case, uh, an image of a, uh, this is part of a, a documentation of Patterson, New Jersey, um, which I believe is his hometown. Um, and I, I think it's quite extraordinary for the, the light uh, that's so nice and sharp in the gas station in the foreground and the barely visible water tower um, behind it, very ominous looking in, in the background, just enough that, that we can see it. This is by Paul Caponegro, um, also an American photographer who has primarily documented um, uh, the natural landscape, um, in this case a, a river in Connecticut. Um, the exposure is long as a result. The water that we see in the background is, is moving swiftly and, and um, blurred, but there's also blur in the foreground. Um, this almost looks like an inverted image because of the reflections. This is by Berndt and Hilla Becker, who were German photographers. A, a co they were a married couple, and um, they uh, dedicated the, most of their work to the um, documentation of uh, industrial um, architecture, in this case, um, I believe they're water towers or something like that, um, and they would exhaustively um, uh, document these, these structures and then put them together in grids like this. Um, generally, they uh, were very concerned about the quality of light. Almost all of their photographs are taken in, in, on overcast days, um, and as a result, there's a, a great deal of clarity in the shadows um, and not a lot of um, uh, contrast to the images. This is by Dean Arbus, um, who is best known for uh, what are often referred to as freaks. Um, she didn't see them that way. Um, she was interested in these people as people. And um, in this case, a circus performer, a heavily tattooed person. And um, the, the look on this man's face and the eyes are just absolutely uh, compelling. Lee Friedlander is a, a street photographer um, who began primarily in the 50s. Um, this is from a series called um, Self-Portrait, um, where he has found his image either um, in the form of a, a shadow or a reflection, um, or actually turned the, the, the camera on himself. Um, in this case, for all intents and purposes, stalking a woman and um, using her as the, um, uh, the canvas for his shadow. This is also by Friedlander, and um, he has done a lot of, uh, taken a lot of images from the, the vehicles that he's in. Um, he tends to rent minivans and, and um, um, 
he photographs from them, but also includes them in the imagery um, so that we end up with these kind of fractured landscapes. In this case, it's, um, uh, it looks like the desert somewhere, and it looks like a, um, uh, a Joshua tree, but is in fact um, sculpture. This is by Gary Winogrand, a um, great friend of, of Lee Friedlander's, um, who was in some respects considered um, the most important photographer of the second half of the 20th century. Um, his street photography is unlike anyone else's, um, and it's a his images are in a style that really are his own and, and no one else's. Um, he also he, he won a, a number of Guggenheim grants, and, and in this case, one that he uh, uh, for in order to complete a series that he referred to as um, public relations. Um, he went to a lot of events where um, uh, there were a lot of uh, news people gathered and, and um, uh, photographed the news gathering as opposed to the um, actual events, in this case, a space launch. Robert Adams is a photographer um, who came out of Colorado, now lives in Washington um, and Washington State, and um, is very environmentally concerned. Um, he started taking pictures in the 60s, long before it was fashionable to be um, an ecologist, um, and has documented the, um, the intersection between the built environment and the natural landscape. Um, he's also particularly interested in um, where uh, a great deal of destruction has taken place. And I, I think this is just a beautiful photograph um, taken in fog. And um, again, we have that, that darkness in the foreground, very strong, and then receding um, into almost whiteness in the background. Louis Baltz. Um, is has concentrated pro primarily um, throughout his career on on various kinds of architecture, um, a lot uh, very similar to Robert Adams in um, his approach to uh, um, the built environment and encroachment on the natural landscape. Um, he's been particularly interested, at least early in his career, he's particularly interested in in um, tract houses under construction, which um, is what we see here. This is by Judy Fiskin, um, Los Angeles, uh, excuse me, a Los Angeles photographer. Um, she's primarily known for her um, very small prints um, of uh, urban neighborhoods, um, individual houses and, and duplexes and, and um, in black and white. Um, but she has also done some color work, um, in this case, a, a lucky landscape. This is by Dwayne Michaels, who um, has primarily uh, worked in, in a, a serial mode um, where he, in which he, he tells a story through a sequence of images. And the story is not necessarily always clear, and it doesn't have to be, but it, um, it tends to be provocative and, and um, uh, thought-provoking. This is by Robert Heineken. Um, who uh, began the photography department at UCLA um, in the late 1960s. Um, he often, he would use his own imagery, but he also would um, appropriate uh, images. This is from a series that he did where he took, he would take a page of a, um, from a magazine and um, through a technique that he developed, um, he would superimpose one side of the, um, the page um, on the other, so you could see um, both the, uh, the, the, uh, the front and the back of the image overlaid. Um, so he would go through magazines looking for this kind of juxtaposition and um, ending up with this kind of wild um, uh, interaction between the two images. This is by Daryl Curran, um, also a Los Angeles photographer. And... Um, his work, uh, this is relatively recent work. Um, 
he's a conceptual photographer and um, he's done a series of which this is a part um, where he's placed objects um, on um, a scanner and the only light is is the light that comes from the scanner um, and he's he uses various uh, backgrounds which he actually covers the objects with. In this case it looks like a piece of paper with um, some ink on it and, and various other things. Um, they're always kind of mysterious and, and uh, it's hard to tell exactly what the relationship between these objects um, might be, but it's, it's also not important because they, they would become kind of these abstractions. William Eggleston was uh, one of the the first photographers to be shown, in fact, he was the first photographer to be shown um, doing color work at the Museum of Modern Art. And um, Eggleston's uh, point of view is, is um, very um, consistently personal. Um, he comes from the South. Um, most of his images are made in the South. And um, uh, He's a prolific photographer um, and culls from thousands of pictures, um, the ones that, that work. In fact, he often gets help um, editing them um, because there's so many and, and um, he needs other eyes to look at, at what he's done. Um, this is, I think, extraordinary um, backlighting, um, uh, really kind of making this, this drink come alive. And um, the gesture of the hand with the straw, just that's the, the final touch. Um, this is also Eggleston, and um, he has photographed a lot of people, in this case a, a small child, and um, looks like the, the waning days of the uh, waning light of the day, but with a very definite context. This is by Stephen Shore, who was the, the second person to have a one-person show of color work at um, Museum of Modern Art. Um, Shore's primary focus is on the architecture, and um, he had, has gone throughout the, the, the United States photographing um, urban, but also um, suburban and um, rural areas. Um, very much in the manner of Walker Evans, um, but with his own sensibility. And um, so as a result, we have this, this sense of, of uh, what largely is small town America in his photographs. These were made primarily in the, uh, the 70s. This so is by Joel Myrowitz, who uh, would become better known as a color photographer, um, but began as a black and white photographer, um, and who would photograph just about anything in front of him. In this case, um, I believe he was at an airport and um, and caught this particular scene in uh, in snow. This is the work that um, Meyerowitz is better known for. Um, he uh, put together a body of work called Cape Light in, in the 70s. He was working primarily with an 8x10 camera and um, uh, shooting Provincetown and the area around it and uh, with a particular sensitivity to um, color and um, and light. This is by Helmut Newton, um, who was a fa fashion photographer, um, also photographed some celebrities, but um, he's best known for his kind of um, offbeat, um, uh, semi-erotic um, imagery. Um, here photographing in the street with a very kind of um, uh, found look to it. Um, I'm not sure. I, I have no idea whether he had any lighting to it or not. Um, it doesn't really matter. Um, the result is one of, of this appearing to be a, a, a very real street scene and somebody who's made up um, as a fashion model would be. Um, this is also by um, Helmut Newton and uh, uh, again his work is very sort of erotically charged. This is by Joel Sternfeld, um, another American photographer um, who has worked primarily with um, large cameras and, and uh, photographed the American scene. This 
This is also by Sternfeld, and actually more typical of, of his work than the last image. Um, very interested in the built environment. This is by Richard Mizrock, who um, is much more interested in the natural environment, although he has at times certainly photographed um, uh, the built environment as well. Very streamlined, simple composition, the beautiful quality of light to it. He lives in Berkeley in the hills, and um, this is actually the view out, his, um, out of his um, backyard. And um, if you look carefully, it's hard to see in this reproduction, but um, it's actually um, Golden Gate. It's, it's San Francisco Bay with uh, the Golden Gate um, under heavy fog that's rolling in.